Under these tarps are dump truck loads of Worthington diamond mine ore that have been stockpiled and we covered them so it wouldn't get rained on and snowed on and uh, leaves all mixed in with the ore. But I want to take a closer look at these diamond, I mean these, this uh, lamprite ore specimens and kind of just, you know, take a look at it. So, uh, the volcanic material came up from over a hundred miles deep and brought diamonds with it. And on the way, it busted through a layer of Trinity clay and other rocks. And uh, this is a clast or a piece of the Trinity clay when the volcanic material busted through. So this is kind of a way to tell you've got lamprite is uh, it's a mixture of all these components and it's considered a brescia when the uh, pieces, the components are angular. Uh, when they're rounded, it's considered a lapilli. Uh, this, uh, I, I wet it just so you can see the parts in it better. Now, Trinity clay is kind of a brick red or a green. So you can have red and green components uh, to this. And when you get it wet, it sometimes falls apart. Uh, the lamprite does. Whoop, and the Trinity clay does too. So this is a piece of the kind of a brick red and then it's got a little green along here too. Uh, this is more of a greenish piece of the Trinity clay in it. And the good thing about presence of big chunks of this is the magma comes up fast and it comes up hot. It's molten rock. And when it it needs to cool down quickly or the diamonds will resorb out of it. If it stays hot for a long time, the diamonds will turn to CO2 gas. And the diamonds here are partly resorbed because they're somewhat well-rounded. And that's kind of like an ice cube melting. Well, the presence of chunks of country rock uh, are kind of the ice cubes that help cool down the molten rock and you want that molten rock to cool down so it's good to see big chunks in this lamprite and you know it's good that this is breaking down now this is some of the green trinity clay and then you've got clasps of other things in here as well and you know different colors and, and chunks and components and pieces so I just want to show you these are kind of like the ice cubes that cool it down and it's good. It's good to see this. It's a good sign. Uh, I think I have green on the left and red on the right. Yeah, the color comes out better when you get it wet. So, uh, anyway, that's that's lamprite with inclusions in it. Uh, we'll look at a few more pieces and then we'll stop playing with the water. Um, but, boy, that wetting it just really gets the color to show out it stands out among that kind of a yellowish brown lamprite uh, so the trinity clay is sedimentary and uh, the lamprite is volcanic and uh, the two when mixed together then cool down quicker but um, just a few more pieces and we'll move on so a green trinity clay and a red trinity clay and uh, it crumbles and there will not be any diamonds in the Trinity clay that was here before the eruption that brought the diamonds to the surface. But it's good to have the presence of it because like I said, it that cools down this so your diamonds don't resorb out of it. Now the diamonds will be in the lamperite part so when that breaks apart, a diamond could come rolling out. And that would be a really good demonstration if only a diamond would roll out while I'm running the camera. It would be nice. Now let me talk about some other components of the lamprite and these are the diamond indicator minerals that that show you that it came up from a hundred miles deep if you see the grass green ones in here that is chromium diopside the red in here are pyrope garnet and the black and there's more black than anything the black are chromium spinel and these are your three classic diamond indicator minerals and they all came up from the diamond stability zone with the diamonds 
more than a hundred miles deep in the earth. That's where these were created. So, uh, when you start finding these three, you know you'll start finding diamonds. Now, we talked about different components of the lamprite, the trinity clay and things, the brescia. Uh, the most interesting component of the diamond is, uh, I mean, of the lamprite is diamond itself. And uh, I've got a couple of uh, certificates of authenticity I wrote today for diamonds. It's windy and I was afraid this would blow away. So I put it in here together and I'll probably get it all dirty with my fingers. But anyway, um, this uh, certifies that it's a genuine USA diamond from the Worthington Diamond Mine. And this is a white diamond weighing eight points. And I signed and dated it. And uh, since I had these here today on March 5th, 2021, and uh, before I put this in the safe and mailed this other one off, I thought I'd just show you what's in the lamp right here at the Worthington Diamond Mine. So there's uh, diamonds in it and um, diamond indicator minerals. And uh, this is a three point. I'm going to get everything all dirty because my fingers are wet and dirty, but I want to show you. So this is a, a three-point white diamond, kind of a, a rice-shaped diamond. The other one was more well-rounded. Uh, and this is going to uh, Kirk Lenz in Ellington, Missouri. And uh, that just shows the shape of the diamond. This is just a photo. So uh, it's not perfect, but it is diamond, and uh, diamonds are great. And this is his certificate of authenticity signed by the guy who wrote the book on diamonds in Arkansas and also the owner of the Worthington Diamond Mine. So uh, anyway, I just thought I'd kind of talk about some of the components of lamparite and uh, the importance of the Trinity clay, the being in there, a brescia, and uh, how that helps us have the diamonds and the diamond indicator minerals. So thank you for joining me for this episode of Genuine Diamonds in Arkansas YouTube channel.